It is my pleasure to start this portion of the Toronto Day of Dialogue where we present the Canadian Integrity Award. I'll be presenting the award on behalf of the Canadian Integrity Award Nominations Committee, which includes representing the TI Canada Board of Directors, Amy Sandu and Anar uh, Papatia, representing TI Canada supporter from Deloitte. I did see Emmy. I think she had to slip out, but Emmy uh, Balboa, and representing a TI Canada member, Adam Ross, who is based out in Vancouver. I want to thank all the members of the committee for volunteering their time to review and select an award winner. The goal of the Canadian Integrity Award is to recognize people and organizations who have taken initiative in the fight against corruption through various means, including research, reporting, advocacy, and advocacy, legislative or policy changes, or upholding the rule of law. In turn, we hope the award recipient inspires other Canadians to act against corruption. The award recipient shows that apathy and accepting the status quo are not acceptable. And while fighting corruption is not easy by any means, hard work and dedication for promoting transparency and accountability can have results to make Canada better for all. We received excellent submissions for the award this year, and I want to thank everyone who put forward very compelling nominations. The awards committee had a thorough and interesting discussion on the merits of all candidates who are each contributing to transparency and accountability in their own right. As a result of the committee's deliberation, we felt it was only fair this year to not only recognize an award winner, but to also recognize an honorable mention. We believe that both recipients, uh, both recipients represent key informal pillars of society that uphold transparency and accountability in Canada. For the honorable mention, we would like to recognize Radio Canada program Enquête. Oop, next one. <laughs> Enquête. Le, uh, pardon my French. L'équipe de journalistes de, journalistes, de product, uh, producteurs et de chercheurs de l'émission Enquête de Radio Canada a réalisé de importants reportages au fil des ans. Reportage où où ils ont jeté la lumière sur la corruption ancienne des entreprises de blanchiment d'argent et sur la corruption municipale. L'équipe a aussi contribué à reportage des Panama Papers et des Paradise Papers. Le Canada a besoin de journalisme de enquête solide comme celui qui est produit par enquête. Un journalisme documenté qui demandait des comptes non seulement au corrompus, mais aussi aux étoiles lorsqu'elles marquent à leur travail d'application de nos lois contre la corruption et, de, et, de, et le blanchiment d'argent. Je tiens donc à féliciter et à remercier de leur travail la rédacteur la rédacteur de en chef des quêtes Luc Tremblay et aussi animatrice Mary Maud Denis qui sont avec nous aujourd'hui. Mary Maud Denis, viens ici. Thank you, James. Thank you, James. Yeah, it's good. Uh, I'm just going to do the thank you, and I'm going to let uh, Marie Maud, who is more, much more charismatic and eloquent than I, do the actual speech. So I would first like to thank TI Canada for bestowing us this honorable mention. We are very, very proud to be recognized you know, that our work is recognized outside of journalistic circles because it's very important to us to have an impact in society. Uh, aussi, uh, I would like to uh, also congratulate uh, Professor Dutton, the, to the this year's award winner. And also, j'aimerais remercier la direction de Radio-Canada uh, la direction de l'information de Radio-Canada qui croit à cette chose difficile et coûteuse qui s'appelle le journalisme d'enquête. Alors, uh, Luce Julien, la directrice de l'information, Dominique Poirier qui dirige les équipes de, de journalistes d'enquête. Et finalement, uh, I would like to thank the entire enquête team, the journalist, the researcher, every, the, the producer, everybody who works 
every week to bring that show to light. And you know, that show every week is a window to for the Canadian public. It's like we open a window to let the sun shine in, you know, in shadowy area. And I would like to uh, to say that, you know, everybody on the team believes, and then I, I'm going to quote former uh, Supreme Court Justice uh, Louis Brandis, you know, everybody on the team believes that sunlight is the best disinfectant. So now, Marie Maud. <clears throat> Merci, Luc. Je ne sais pas si je suis plus charismatique que toi, but I, I am an attention junkie, just like any TV host. So, um, so um, ben c'est vraiment un honneur pour moi de venir cueillir vos, vos fleurs que je vais redistribuer à toute l'équipe journalistique. Uh, 16 years of Revelation, it's our 358th episode uh, airing tonight. So, That's that's fairly a long run for an investigative program. Well, the Fifth Estate is 48 years, but we're and um, we believe at Enquête that uh, making the governments and the the private sector uh, accountable of their action, it, it's the motor of uh, of what we do and the reason that we sometimes spend more time with their lawyers than with their own families, um, and. As you possibly know, uh, there's no sacred cow at uh, Enquête. We revealed corruption, tax schemes, illegal acts, affiliation with organized crime, or all of these above, uh, in, involving flagship companies in our Canadian economy. Uh, Bombardier, Alstom, before your time, don't worry. <laughs> Saputo, Irving, KPNG. SNC Lavalin, that that was a great lunch, SNC, by the way. Thank you. And 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 of course, we we revealed corruption, illegal acts inside the Canadian Quebec government uh, and on the municipal level uh, as well. I, I couldn't really tell you if it's harder to unearth uh, the little secrets of the private sector or the Canadian government, but we at Enquête are also convinced that it is important to be naming names and exposing wrongdoing because the great conversations we have today, they won't reach those people walking on the street if we don't give clear examples, if we don't name names, if we don't put the circle around the stain. And I believe truly that um, When you name names and you expose wrongdoing, you don't, in the long run, fuel um, the distrust in institutions. On the, on, it's just the, the contrary. It shows that the accountability machine is well oiled and that our democracy is in good health. Alors, on partage vraiment plusieurs valeurs en commun avec uh, Transparency et des objectifs qui sont vraiment de la plus criante actualité, alors que nos dirigeants euh, dénonce les pays totalitaires pour leur manque de circulation de l'information. We are far from being uh, perfect in Canada. I think we, we can all agree uh, on that in, in this room. And there's so much to achieve to bring real transparency in Canada and live up to our values. Uh, for example, real accurate information on beneficial owners of businesses and properties a honest application of the access to information law, not to some information when we feel like it, playing the clock and the exceptions to give uh, as less as possible. So our commitment is to keep on revealing those stories that are concrete illustrations of these big principles that may seem vague to a lot of people. We have to rebrand and bring more sexiness to that beneficial owner concept. It lacks, so yeah, snow washing is not bad, but I think we should hire like a big marketing firm. Alors notre travail vraiment, c'est de faire de la pédagogie puis de faire la démonstration aux citoyens que ces grands concepts-là, ça les affecte dans leur vie de tous les jours. Alors, en terminant, euh, M. Hutton, enquête, toute notre équipe vous félicite tout à fait chaleureusement. C'est un honneur d'avoir de, de, une mention d'honneur euh, dans votre sillage. Et euh, merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, Transparency, for that tap dans le dos. 
Uh, and as we say here, let's keep on fighting the good fight. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Marie Mud, a uh, Luke. Our award winner, and uh, now to turn to our award winner. Our award winner works with the community who often triggers an investigation into corruption, whistleblowers. Without whistleblowers putting their reputation, financial safety, mental health, and physical safety on the line, most corruption cases would never come to light. Whistleblowers do not just need someone to listen to them, to help them tell their story, and to guide them through a tumultuous path. Whistleblowers also need strong legislation to protect them from retaliation. Our award winner has been working tirelessly for years on all these fronts. It is because of his personal dedication that the awards committee is honored to present the second Canadian Integrity Award to Mr. David Hutton. David is senior fellow at the Center for Free Expression uh, Whistleblowing Initiatives at Toronto Metropolitan University. The list of initiatives he has taken on, on to support whistleblowers includes taking the calls of over 400 whistleblowers between 2005 and 2014, calling out gaps in federal and provincial whistleblower protection laws, both informally and on government bodies, initiating the Canadian Standards Association guidelines for the implementation of whistleblower protection, co-developing the CFEWI's tool for the assessment of whistleblower laws, leading and providing expertise to organizational and news reports. While David himself, I'm presuming, would say there is much more to be done, his extraordinary dedication and efforts deserve recognition. And that recogni re deserve recognition. And in that recognition, we hope other Canadians will see what is possible. David, congratulations. Thank you to TI Canada and the committee that chose me. It's a, a great honor indeed to be recognized in this way by such a respected organization. However, I cannot accept this award without acknowledging so many friends and colleagues, too many to name, who have engaged with me in this important work. Uh, I'm thinking of people at the Centre for Free Expression at uh, uh, what used to be Warson, uh, the Government Accountability Project in Washington, DC, uh, and also colleagues in the UK, Ireland and Australia and not to overlook WIN, the Whistleblowing International Network. It's been a real privilege to work with so many smart, dedicated people who tirelessly strive to achieve what sometimes seems like an elusive goal, a real protection for whistleblowers. And there's another group I want to mention that I want to recognize, the whistleblowers themselves. In my experience, nearly always honest employees who without any prospect of personal gain put themselves at risk to expose wrongdoing that may harm others. These are people who are the most deserving of recognition and who rarely receive any. In our incredibly interdependent society, we rely constantly on others for our safety and well-being. Every time we board a train or a plane, every time we take some medication or undergo some medical procedure, every time we invest our savings. The list goes on. Every day, we do things that could cause us serious harm if others are not doing their jobs honestly and competently. But we also know that bad actors can be found everywhere, in any organization. How can we protect ourselves? Decades of research confirms repeatedly 
that whistleblowing is the single most effective way of uncovering fraud and other wrongdoing within organizations, catching about 42% of all frauds detected. That's more than three times and more than the next most effective method, which is internal audit at about 16%. This means that our traditional methods of detecting fraud are to some extent hamstrung if tips from whistleblowers are not forthcoming. And we need the help of whistleblowers more than ever before. There's never been a moment in history where humanity has faced such an array of serious, uh, possibly terminal problems, ranging from global warming to ongoing, ongoing pandemics, uh, toxic politics that are dividing society, undermining democracy everywhere, and dictators strengthening their hold on power and starting insane wars. In all of these situations, reliable information is just one of the tools we need most just to understand properly what's going on, let alone work out solutions and agree on them. But instead, <clears throat> we face an unprecedented epidemic of misinformation manufactured on an industrial scale by vested interests and spread like wildfire on social media for profit. Whistleblowers can help us in an important way to tackle many of these existential problems simply by exposing the facts. There's so many past cases where their actions have made a huge difference. Rick Piltz was one of the first to expose the deliberate spread of misinformation regarding global warming, which we now has, know has been propagated by the fossil fuel industry for decades. Daniel Ellsberg's publication of the Pentagon Papers helped to bring the Vietnam War to an end after it had dragged on for 20 years. Jeffrey Wigand's exposures paved the way for litigation against big tobacco, which ultimately cost them more than $200 billion. It also paved the way for measures to, public health measures to curb the use of tobacco. Francis Haugen just last year exposed how Facebook's algorithms prioritize misinformation for profit. And she was able to explain how governments can tackle the spread of hate speech and conspiracy theories effectively. Many Canadians have also made a difference. Alan Cutler, the sponsorship scandal you've all heard of, provided vital evidence to the Gumbry Inquiry, whose report helped bring down a government exposed as corrupt. Dr. Michelle Burl Edwards' efforts helped expose the pharmaceutical industry's undue influence on research and place these conflicts of interest at the center of medical ethics worldwide. During the pandemic, Ashley Jenkins, a young nurse, exposed appalling negligence at a nursing home in Hamilton, forcing the regulator to finally, finally start shutting down this and many other rogue operations. Her actions probably saved hundreds of lives. Now, these are all success stories in terms of getting the problem exposed. But the whistleblowers often paid a very heavy price. I, as James mentioned, I used to run a small whistleblowing charity called FAIR. And besides our other advocacy efforts, I began offering a free confidential helpline. Soon I was inundated with calls. And in the end, I spoke to more than 400 whistleblowers. They greatly appreciated being heard and the help I could give them to better understand their situation. But uh, given the lack of legal protections available, very few of them had even the slightest chance of success. That's what it was like, but still is like, because here in Canada, we have among the worst whistleblowing laws on the planet. Last year, an expert study of whistleblowing laws in about 50 countries rated Canada as the worst with one point out of 20. A good score would be about 15. At a federal level, we have a whistleblowing system for government employees that has cost over $100 million to date. Yet in 15 years of operation, it has never protected a single whistleblower out of about 500 who have reported reprisals, not a single one. Uh, out of 1,500 reports of suspected wrongdoing, it has found only 18 cases. 
all relatively minor, while not even bothering to investigate credible reports about serious problems, for example, the Phoenix Pay scandal, which has cost us $2.4 billion and counting. Why such poor results? Because it's set up this way. Our federal system, our federal whistleblower protection system, functions as a powerful offensive weapon used against government whistleblowers and a highly efficient system for covering up wrongdoing. It lures whistleblowers with bogus promises of protection, takes the valuable information that they have about suspected wrongdoing and buries most of it forever, forever, uh, usually without any investigation. The whistleblowers, they're placed on a treadmill of costly rigged bureaucratic processes that will tie them up for years and ruin them with absolutely no prospect of justice. This is a catastrophic failure to protect some of those within our society who are among the most deserving and the most vulnerable. People who have put themselves at risk <clears throat> in order to protect us. As a, as a result, we're largely unprotected from abuses of power. Just look at the scandals that have, have appeared in our media, the sponsorship scandal, the Phoenix paid the backlit, Duffygate, uh, the Weed Charity scandal, SNC Lavalin, the list goes on. And these are just the abuses we've got to know about. After 17 years of striving for change, I, I do feel disappointed at times when I look at our lack of progress to date in protecting Canadian whistleblowers and the cost of this, both to them and to us. But I'm optimistic about the future. And I'm also inspired by an opportunity that I see. I'm optimistic because I see a powerful trend of strong protection for whistleblowers becoming the norm around the world as people realize the benefits to society. Within a decade or so, we've gone from a tiny handful of countries having whistleblowing laws to more than 50, including all countries within the EU. This has come about not by accident, but through the work of many dedicated people who've been working in this file for decades. Canada is at present a shameful outlier, but with their help, we can catch up on our peers. I'm inspired too, because through my dealings with so many whistleblowers, I've learned an important lesson about human nature. I've come to understand that there are decent and honest people in every walk of life who will always try and do the right thing if they can. In every type of organization, there seems to be a core of these people who just don't have it in them to turn a blind eye to injustice, who feel they have no choice but to speak out, even though the repercussions for them may be very serious. And these people are everywhere, even in organizations such as financial institutions where conventional wisdom suggests that money is the only motivator. Elaine Fleischman is a young Canadian lawyer who blew the whistle on her employer, JP Morgan, twice. Uh, she's known as the $9 billion witness because that's how much her actions cost the hedge fund. So the opportunity excite, excites me is what can happen when whistleblowers are protected. I have a vision that someday honest employees all across Canada in every type of organization will be able to speak out and be properly heard when they have concerns about conduct that may cause harm and that they will be shielded from reprisals that are designed to silence and punish them. Now this may seem an unrealistic, unattainable vision, but we can make big strides towards it as other countries are doing. And as we do, we will begin to unleash the tremendous power of a kind of volunteer force, millions of honest Canadians acting as our eyes and ears, looking out for us in their workplaces. I know that this volunteer anti-corruption brigade already exists. I've talked to a lot of them. Its members are willing and able to serve us, but they're currently held captive and muzzled by fear. As we begin to liberate them, 
imagine how much greater confidence we will all have that our governments are focused on serving us and not wasting millions of tax dollars on boondoggles and bogus contracts. Imagine how much safer we will be from corporations destroying our environment for profit and stealing our savings. Imagine how much harder it will be for the purveyors of lies and misinformation to survive when insiders can expose their corrupt business practices and their deceitful operating procedures. And imagine how much better we will, better informed we will be and better equipped to understand and deal with the many existential problems that we face as a species. And what can you do to help bring this about? If you're someone with power or influence, you can start with your own organization. Research shows that the business case for setting up your own internal whistleblowing system is a no-brainer. You should be doing this already. Uh, both CSA and TI publish guides on how to set up such a system, and there are firms that can assist running the hotline you're going to need and helping to get your system working properly, which requires commitment and expertise. It's not a simple matter. If you're, the other end of, if you're at the other end of the power spectrum um, and there's something that you need to blow the whistle on yourself, uh, please first just stop and, <laughs> and prepare. Make sure you really understand what you're getting into and how to mitigate your risk before you take any action. I suggest you call our confidential helpline at CFE, which exists precisely to help people like you. If you're someone who would like to know more or get involved, check out our website, the whistleblowing section at the Center for Free Expression, and sign up for our newsletter so that you can become part of a critical mass of Canadians who want to see something done. That's how social change always comes about through the efforts of a small committed community. So please do join us. Thank you. Thank you very much, David. Yeah, you can see <laughs> This concludes the formal portions of our day. Thank you, everybody, for making it to the end. I'm going to hand it off to our chair and president, Susan Cote Freeman, for her wrap up thoughts for today. Susan, summarize everything and how we're going to fight for it.